Hello, in Arduino Piano Part 5, I will explain the C and C++ data structures, array, struct and union. See you after the intro. In Part 4, I explain the integer types, what a nipple is and how hex numbers look like. And also I explain the use of pointers and how the pointer arithmetic works. Today we continue with the C and C++ data structures, array, struct and union. Arrays are used to store a lot of equal data structures. Struct is used to combine different data structure to one bigger data structure. And unions are used to overlay different data structures. If you want to store a lot of equal data, you can use a data structure array. An array declaration is as follows. You write the type of the elements of the array, then the variable name, square bracket open, the number of elements you want to have, and square bracket closed, semicolon. With this declaration you will get uh, three elements beginning with the index of zero. So you will get a0, a1, a2. With the declaration in 16t, b, square bracket open, 2, square bracket close, semicolon, you will get two 16-bit integer variables starting with the index zero and they are b0 and b1. It is important to know that the first element is always the zero element, here a0 and here b0. This has the consequence that the last element, here a2, is one below the number of elements which are declared here. And here b1 is one below the number of elements here declared. This is a little bit dangerous because if you make a read access to the element p2 then you will read some nonsense data from the memory and it's even more dangerous if you make a write access to this uh, variable p2 because then you overwrite important data from another variable. These elements are stored in a sequential list of data. For 8-bit integer like here, it is easy, each element has its own byte, a0, a1, a2. For 16-bit data like here or bigger elements, it is done in the following way. First we have the byte 0 of the element b0, then the byte 1 of element b0, then byte 0 of the element b1, and then byte 1 of the element b1. If you want to initialize the array during declaration, you write after the square bracket close an equal sign, curly bracket open, the values of the elements separated by commas, and a curly bracket close semicolon. In this case, we have decimal 16 is hexadecimal 10 in element A0. We have decimal 32, which is hexadecimal 20 in element A1. And we have decimal 5, which is hexadecimal 05 in element A2. For the B elements, we have 1024 decimal, which is 0400 hexadecimal in the element B0 where 04 the higher byte is in byte 1 and 00 the lower byte is in byte 0. 128 is in hexadecimal 0080 in element B1 where the high byte is 00 in byte 1 and the low byte 80 is in byte 0. During declaration, the size of the array here 2 and here 3 must be a constant that the compiler knows how much memory must be reserved for the arrays. 
to have access to one of the elements during program execution, the index could be either a constant or a variable. We have here an unsigned integer variable e, which is initialized with zero. And the assignment a2 is a e. e is zero, so finally the assignment is a2 is a zero. So we copy a0 to a2. We copy the contents of a0, which is 1, 0 hex, to the variable a2. We increase now e by 1, so in e is 1. Then we make the assignment b from e is b from 0, b from e is b from 1, so b from 1 is b from 0. We copy b0 to b1, we copy b0 to b1. So 0400 hex is copied to the variable b1. I have now activated in the main loop the array test and scroll up to the array test and uploaded it to the Arduino board that we can compare our program code with the output on the monitor screen. First we print the headline array test and see here array test. Then we print the contents of the three variables a0, a1 and a2 and we see here the contents and it was 16 decimal, which is 1, 0 hexadecimal, 32 decimal, which is 2, 0 hexadecimal, and 5 decimal, which is 0, 05 hexadecimal. We copy now AE to A2. E is 0, so we copy A0 to A2 and do the output again. And we see the contents of A0, which is 10 hex, is copied to A2. Now we output the values B0 and B1. In B0 we have 1024 decimal, which is 0400 hexadecimal, and we have the B1 element with 128 decimal, which is 0080 hexadecimal. Now we increase E by 1, E is then 1, then we copy B0 to BE, BE is B1, so we copy B0 to B1 and output the values and we see that the value from B0 is copied to B1. With struct you can build up your own data type which can consist of several different data types. The syntax is as follows. First the keyword struct and then the name of the data type. Here my data underscore t. Then curly bracket open and then a list of all the variable definitions you want to have in your data type. For example in 16 underscore t and the variable name a semicolon in 32 underscore t and the variable name b semicolon and so on. And at the end curly bracket closed and semicolon. This is only a type definition. There is no actual variable created. To create a variable from your data type, you must write as usual first the data type, here my data underscore t for this data type, and then the variable name here x, and then semicolon. When the variable x is declared with the data type my data underscore t, then the memory is structured in this way. To have access to the subvariable c within the main variable x, you have to write main variable name x, then a dot, and then the subvariable name c. With the assignment x dot a is hex 4321, the hex number 4321 is loaded in the subvariable a from the main variable x. With the high byte 43 hex and the low byte 21 hex. 
with the assignment x.b is x.a, the subvariable a from the main variable x is loaded in the subvariable b from the main variable x. So we copy the content of a to the variable b and the upper bytes are filled with zeros to get here the same value in the total variable. With the assignment x.d is 10, the decimal number 10 is loaded in the subvariable d from the main variable x, or the hexadecimal number 08 is loaded in the subvariable d from the main variable x. With the assignment x.c is x.d, the subvariable d of the main variable x will be copied to the subvariable c of the main variable x, or the content of x variable d o a will be copied to c. I have now activated the struct test in the main loop and scroll now up to the struct test and upload it to the Arduino board so we can compare the program code and the output on the monitor. Here we define our own struct data type called MyDataD and it contains a 16-bit integer variable A, a 32-bit integer variable B, a 8-bit integer variable C and an unsigned 8-bit integer variable D. Here we define the variable x to the data type myDataT and here we define the pointer y to an 8-bit integer variable which is a pointer to a byte and it is used to show later the memory layout of the variable x. I scroll now the screen a little bit up so that we see all program steps of the routine. Here we print the headline struct test on the monitor and we see on the monitor struct test. Then we load into the variable x.a the hex value 4321 and then we output this variable to the monitor in hex format and we see x.a is equal 4321. Now we copy x.a to x.b and output the value of x.b on the monitor. And we see we have here also 4, 3, 2, 1 and the upper bytes are 0. Now we load the decimal value 10 into the variable x.d and output the hex value of x.d on the monitor. And we see x.d is hex OA which is decimal 10. And finally we copy the variable x.d to the variable x.c and output x.c in hex format to the monitor and we see x.c is also 0a. The variable x has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 bytes. With the pointer method we can here output the memory layout of the variable x. We assign here the address of the variable x to the pointer y. Due to the different types we have to do here a type conversion of the pointer. And the address of the variable x points to the first byte of the variable x. Now we do a loop with 8 steps and in each step we output the hex value of the variable where the pointer y is pointing to and then increment the pointer y by one byte. And on the monitor we see here the 8 bytes and we can see 21 is 21, 43 is 43, 21 is 21, 43 is 43, 0 is 0, 0 is 0, 0 a is 0 a and 0 a is 0 a. Unfortunately here is not clear which is c and d. I will do here a small change in the program and write 9 and upload the program again. And now we see 0 9 is 0 9 and 0 a is 0 a. 
Now it's clear how the memory look like. The last data type I want to explain is union. With union you can overlay different data types on the same memory location. The syntax is similar to the data type struct. First we have the keyword union, then the data type name here my data underscore t, then curly bracket open, the definition of the sub variables, curly bracket closed and semicolon. The sub variable definitions are done in the usual way, first the data type name and then the variable name and semicolon. To create the union of my data t, we write first the data type name my data t and then the variable name here x and a semicolon. The main difference between struct and union is, at struct all the subvariables have its own memory location with increasing memory addresses, and at union all the data here are overlaid and start with the same memory address. The 16-bit integer variable a uses the byte 0 and byte 1 of the union. The 32-bit integer variable b uses the byte 0, 1, 2 and 3 of the union. The 8-bit integer variable c uses the byte 0 of the union and the unsigned 8-bit integer variable d uses also the byte 0 of the union. This has the consequence that the write operation to one of these subvariables will also change all other subvariables within the union. Success to one of the subvariables within the main variable is in the same manner like the struct construct. We write the main variable name, dot and subvariable name. With the assignment x.p is equal hex 4433 we load in the subvariable b the hex values 4433 With the assignment x.c is minus 1, we load minus 1 into the subvariable c. Minus 1 is ff hex, so we load in the subvariable c ff hex. Now we load 256 in the subvariable x.a. 256 decimal is 0100 hexadecimal, so we load 0100 in the subvariable a. Now we load 44 hex into the subvariable x.d. We have here x.d and write here 44 hex. And finally, we load x.a into the subvariable x.b. We load the subvariable x.a into the bigger subvariable x.b. That is, they have the same value. x.b must have in the upper byte zeros. I have now activated the union test in the main loop and scroll up to the union test and load it up to the Arduino board. So we can compare the program code and the output on the monitor. We have here our type definition of our union mydata.t. It contains a 16-bit variable a, a 32-bit variable b, a 8-bit variable c and an unsigned 8-bit variable d. From this data type mydata.t we create the variable x. I scroll now it a little bit up so that we can see all the single program steps. We write the headline union test to the monitor and we see on the monitor union test. Now we load in the subvariable x.b the hex value for 4332211 and then we output the hex value of the variable x.b on the monitor and see x.b is 4433221. We load minus 1 into the subvariable x.c. Then we output the hex value of x.c on the monitor. Then we output the hex value of x.b on the monitor. This is the biggest variable, so we can see all four bytes. And we see 
x dot c is ff, which is a hex value for minus 1, and x dot b is 443322ff, because this byte is also used by x dot c. We load the decimal value 256 into the subvariable a and output the hex value of the subvariable x dot a and also the hex value of the subvariable x dot b. And we see x dot a is 0100, which is the hex value for the decimal value 256. And we see x dot b is 4433100. And we see here these two bytes are also used by the subvariable a. Now we load the hex value 44 into the subvariable x dot d and output the hex value of the subvariable x dot d and the hex value of the subvariable x dot b on the monitor and we see x dot d is 44 and we see on x dot b we have 443301 and now 44 because it is this part is also used for the subvariable xd and finally, we copy x dot a to x dot b and output the subvariable x dot b on the monitor. And we see 0144 is copied into the subvariable x dot b. And to have the same value, the upper bytes are set to zero. Now we have the knowledge of all data types which we use in the Arduino Piano project. What's still open is the explanation of the subroutines out in A hex, out in 6 in hex and out in 32 hex. For this I scroll up to the beginning of the program and here we have the routines. The routine out in 8 hex gets a message and an 8 bit number and it transfers it to the out in hex routine first the message sends a number of bytes, 8 bits are 1 byte, and the address of the number. The routine out in 16 hex gets a message text and a 16 bit number and it transfers it to the out in hex routine, first the message, sends a number of bytes, here 2 because 16 bits are 2 bytes, and the address of the number. And finally out in 32 hex gets a message text and a 32-bit number and it transfers it to out in text first the message sends a number of bytes 32 bits are 4 bytes and the address of the number. Now we look on the subroutine out in text. For this we scroll a little bit up. For the subroutine out in text we use a lot of what we have learned about data structures. Here we get the message text. Here we get the address of the number, which we should output in hex format to the monitor, and here is the size in bytes of this number. First we create an array of char with 16 elements and the name into hex. The elements are preloaded with the characters 0 to 9 and the characters A to F. So we have in the array all 16 hex digits. The index runs from 0 to 15. So if we put here a decimal number between 0 and 15, we will get the related hex digit. We also create a pointer to an 8-bit integer variable, which is a pointer to 1 byte. In number is the starting address from our variable. We load it in the byte pointer n. Here is no type conversion necessary because the keyword void says that this pointer is compatible to all types of pointers. For the output we want to write the number from the highest byte to the lowest byte. The pointer points to the beginning of the variable which is the lowest byte. So we have to add the size of the variable. In this case 4 bytes plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 then we are 1 byte above so we have to subtract 1. So we write n is n plus bytes minus 1. 
We print the message on the monitor and then we have a for loop with bytes iterations. At each iteration we print to the monitor the hex number of the higher nipple and the lower nipple and then we decrease the byte pointer. To get the higher nipple we take the number n is pointing to here we have our asterisk that we get the value where n is pointing to shift this value for position to the right then the higher nipple is on the lower nipple position and the higher nipple is filled with zeros so we have here in the index a number from 0 to 15 of the higher nipple and with the int to hex we get the hex digit of this higher nipple to get the lower nipple we take the number n is pointing to and make a logical end connection with the hex value OF so the higher 4 bits are set to 0 and the lower 4 bit remain as they are. So we have here the index number from 0 to 15 of the lower nipple and with int to hex we get the hex digit of the lower nipple. If you have questions, suggestions or other remarks please write it in the comments below. Comments to the software in the video description text below. The video description text did not accept the characters lower than and bigger than. Therefore these characters are replaced by the strings underscore LT underscore for lower than and underscore BT underscore for bigger than. After you have copied the source code from the video description text to the Arduino development environment, you must replace the strings underscore LT underscore with the lower than character and the string underscore BT underscore with the bigger than character. Then you can compile and upload the program to the Arduino. After you have copied the program code from the video description text into the Arduino development environment, you have to deselect here Bearbeiten or Edit and here Suchen or Search or Find and then you get this input box and you have to put here underscore LT underscore and in the second line the lower sign and select replace all and then we have to write here underscore bt underscore and select here the bigger sign and replace all and then you can close the box and upload the program. In case the program make output to the serial monitor program the baud rate in the serial monitor program selected here must be equal to the bit rate selected here in the setup routine for the serial begin statement. And the same if the program make output to the serial plotter program, then in the serial plotter program the baud rate selected here must fit to the bit rate selected here in the setup routine at the serial begin statement. That's all for today. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe my channel. And to be informed about new videos, activate the bell. See you in the next video. Bye bye.